All right, well, I said I was going to do part three, and so, you know, here we go again. Um, I shared the last time, if you heard part two, I said that I was going to share a dream about a friend of mine that literally, if he had not heard the word of the Lord the third time, he would have died. And uh, you might think, whoa, that's pretty serious. Well, you just remember that uh, it says uh, here that uh, the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing. So sometimes God's got to wake us up, man, when we're asleep. Well, you know, uh, a friend of mine was literally driving uh, his car. He had his two boys in the back seat. And uh, he fell asleep at the wheel. And let me just tell you something. You don't want to be falling asleep at the wheel. You want to be awake. And I believe, you know, in ministry, a lot of times a vehicle represents ministry. And sometimes we fall asleep at the wheel. Sometimes because we just don't know the word of the Lord. Just like young Samuel, it says he did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord. So that's very common that if you don't have a message from God, you may not know the Lord. And uh, so you want to, it's okay to seek God for a message. It's okay to ask. Now, Samuel, we don't even know. There's not a recorded record where he asked. But I believe he was in the house of God. Uh, I believe that uh, he probably wanted to hear from God. He was very close to the ark and the tabernacle of God. And he was serving in the house of God. So it shows that, you know, even though his mom is the one that brought him into the temple, that eventually it was his heart to hear from God. Well, anyway, so my friend's driving along, falls asleep. He's about ready to go off a cliff. Now, this would have killed him. It wasn't, you know, a hundred miles deep, but it was, a, it was a crevice that would have, you know, taken his life and the life of his sons. And the word of the Lord came to him, and God spoke his name, just like he spoke to young Samuel. And uh, he called him by name. Well, that woke my friend up, but he didn't quite, you know, get it, because he still didn't get up all the way. And all of a sudden, Jesus' face appeared right inside the windshield. He literally saw Jesus' face. And Jesus called him a second time, and then a third time, which finally he put his foot on the you know, brake and uh, stopped right before he went off a cliff. Well, you know, I just know God is love. God is good. You know, God wakes us up. And, uh, you know, just my friend had fallen asleep in the natural. And uh, I believe that God allowed that. I mean, God didn't put him to sleep. We fall asleep. But God knew that would happen, and he knew if he didn't speak, that something horrible would happen. So God is that much love. You know, it shows God watches over us. You mean God knew my friend was driving in the middle of the night? Oh yeah, God knew. A friend of mine actually, and I don't know if I've even shared this in another video. Maybe I have. I've, sometimes I've shared things even in duplicate because I don't remember. But uh, he was uh, going to a, a convention. Uh, the guy that wrote the Left Behind series, uh, Jerry Jenkins, uh, he was out uh, speaking. Uh, this was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. As my friend was driving back, all of a sudden a voice spoke to him from the back seat. And you, be, you might be like, what? A voice spoke? Yeah. A man was in his back seat. Now, the only thing was is there was no man in his back seat when he got in the car. Well, you can say, well, maybe someone snuck in his back seat. Well, let me tell you something that uh, this individual spoke to him and said, in about five minutes there's something in the road and I want to make sure that you don't hit it. And... Uh, then the person left. People that, you know, hide in back seats, they don't just disappear. So this was an angel of the Lord. And it's interesting, the Bible says the angels of God like to look into the things of the house of God and the family of God. Well, it's interesting, there was an angel of the Lord at a Left Behind series uh, conference in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, I think that's interesting. And he just happened to be in my friend's back seat, just happened to know what was up ahead on the road that would have caused my friend injury had he not seen it. Maybe my friend was also getting sleepy at the wheel. Anyways, so uh, this voice spoke to him, and then there was nobody in the back seat. But he saw a man in the back seat. So that was an angel of the Lord. So, uh, you know, people don't believe Jesus is coming back. When angels of God are going to left behind conferences in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you might want to wake up a little bit and think that's a possibility. Anyways, so that's what happened, you know, down the line, there was something in the road, and my friend avoided it. He actually, even though the angel spoke to him, he still almost hit the thing, but he ended up missing it, and, uh, you know, he, he was spared. But the reality matter is, is that a lot of times, God is trying to speak to us, and just like it says in Job 33:14, it says, God will speak once, 
Yes, twice in a dream and a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men, then he seals our instruction. But it says God will speak once, yes, twice, yet man perceives it not. See, young Samuel didn't perceive it was the Lord. Eli should have known, but Samuel didn't until the fourth time. Well, my friend, it took three times of having his name called and a vision. See, he actually saw Jesus on his windshield, you know, talking to him, saying, hey, wake up. So I just want to encourage you with that revelation, that it is time to wake up, that this is the midnight hour, that uh, it is time. We are the generation in which the real Jesus Christ is going to come back and uh, he's going to take up his church to be with him forever. And you don't want to be asleep like the, you know, the five foolish virgins. You want to be one of those five wise virgins. You want to be uh, in the house of God, serving men of God, in the presence of God, you don't want your lamp to go out. You want your lamp to remain lit. And since God's Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path, you want to stay in this Word of God. You want to go to and fro. You want to increase your knowledge in this. And, you know, there's all kinds of knowledge on the Internet, man. There's all kinds of revelation that is now being given out. And uh, you just want your eyes open. You don't want to be like Eli where your eyes were closed and they were going dim and you couldn't recognize when God was speaking to a young person being trained for ministry. So I just want to encourage you that uh, God does speak in dreams and visions. God does speak in prophetic words. God does do signs and wonders on the earth. He does shocking things. He does suddenlies. And you want to be awake. You don't want to be asleep. When the sound comes, behold, the bridegroom goes. At, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. I think I might title that. Uh, behold, I, I might title this, Wake Up, Behold, the Bridegroom is on his way, go out to meet him. All right, I might be doing a part four, I don't know, you might have to look for it. Anyways, God bless, man. Thanks for your time again. Get on my website, www.triumphantvision.com. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and, uh, you know, take a look and uh, got some awesome videos. I got one that says about a man who claims he heard from God. I heard from God on May 15th of 1995. I also heard from God on May 18th of 1995. I also heard from God on uh, December 30th of uh, 2011. I've heard from God from some other times, but uh, those are ones that I think God's emphasizing right now. I want to encourage you, man, that uh, sometimes God will speak once, yes, twice, yet man perceives it not. I think it's about time you perceive it. All right, man. God bless.